What's happening, class? The goal for you guys today is for you to be able to solve equations with squares and cubes. Alright, so really what you're going to have to try and learn is just these two things right here that I have in red. Alright, squares and square roots, those are inverse operations. Alright, and cubes and cube roots are inverse operations, and this is why. Let's say I start with the number 16. Alright, well, I'm going to do something to the 16. I'm going to find the square root of 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. But let's say I want to go back to my original number. Well, I can't do the square root again, because the square root of 4 is 2. I want to go from 4 back to 16. So in order to do that, I have to square 4. As soon as I do that, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. Alright, so these are inverse operations. Same thing the other way. Let's say I start with 7, and I square 7. 7 to the second power. Alright, I get 49. Alright, but let's say I want to go back to my original number. I want to change 49 back into a 7. Well, in order to do that, now, instead of squaring that, like we did before with the 7, we have to take the square root of 49. Square roots and squares are inverse operations. So by using these, I can go from my original number, I square it, I get 49, then to go back to 7, I just have to find the square root of 49, and it's 7. All right. Cubes and cube roots, exact same thing. All right, if we have 125 and we find the cube root of 125, well, that's going to be 5. If I want to go back to the original number, I have to use the inverse operation of cube root, which is just cubing it. So 5 cubed, which is 5 to the third power, 5 times 5 times 5, you get your original number, 125 and then it works the other way around. Let's say I give you the number 3, all right, and we put 3 to the third power, all right, we cube it. Well, 3 to the third power is 27, so in order to go back to my original number, I have to do the inverse of cubing a number, which is finding the cube root of a number. So if I find the cube root of 27, I get my original number, I get 3, all right? so. What we're going to do is we're going to apply these concepts to solving equations that have cubes and cube roots, squares, and square roots. All right, so you're going to love this. There's only one more slide. So you're not going to have too many notes to take. All right, but we're going to solve these first four together, and then the next two you're going to give a shot on your own. So... First, I've got the square root of c minus 14 equals negative 9. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of that minus 14. All right, so I'm going to do the inverse of minus 14, which is plus 14. And I'm going to do that on both sides. All right, so now these are going to cancel. And we'll make that a little darker. All right, those cancel out. Now all I have left is square root of c. Equals negative 9 plus 14. That's going to give me positive 5. All right, and now the last step. I want to get rid of that square root. So I have to use the inverse of a square root, which is squaring a number. So I want to put this and this to the second power. All right, so I'm going to put this to the second power, and I'm going to put 5 to the second power. What that's going to do is that's going to completely get rid of that square root symbol. All right, so these are going to cancel out, so I have nothing left but C. And 5 squared is just 5 times 5, which is 25. Now, I know 
A lot of you can probably just figure out what she is in your head to get our answer. All right, but I'm going to want you to show your work and make sure you're using this method, okay? Number two, now I have this entire thing under a square root. So I have to find the square root of m plus 8, and that equals 7. All right, now when the entire expression is under a square root, I want to get rid of that first. So what I want to do is to get rid of a square root, the inverse of a square root is to the second power, squaring it. So I'm going to put this to the second power and 7 to the second power. When I do that, that gets rid of all of that, so I have nothing left but m plus 8. So I've got m plus 8. And then 7 squared is just 7 times 7, which is 49. Alright, and then last step, you guys all know what to do. Gotta get rid of the plus 8, the inverse, minus 8. So I'm going to do minus 8 on both sides. So, these cancel. All I have left is M. And 49 minus 8 is 41. Alright, pretty easy. Number 3. P to the third power plus 10 equals negative 17. All right, well, the first thing I want to do, since, like before, that square, that square root was only around the variable. This cube, all right, only applies to the variable, not that number also, like that square root did in that equation. So the first thing I want to do is just get rid of that plus 10. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is minus 10. Do that on both sides. These cancel out. Now all I have left over here is p to the third. So we're going to do p to the third power equals, and then we got negative 17 minus 10. Same sign sum. Just add them up. 17 plus 10 is 27, but since they're both negative, our answer is negative. So now I've got p to the third power equals negative 27. Well, I need to get p all by itself. I'm not solving for p to the third, I'm just solving for p. So I want to cancel out that cube. Well, the inverse of a cube is a cube root. So I need to find the cube root of this, and then the cube root, I don't know if I'm going to have space, of negative 27. All right, so when I do that, that cancels out the cube root and the cube, so now all I have left is that variable, p. And then the cube root of negative 27. So what number times itself three times is negative 27? Well, huh? it's going to be negative 3. Remember, the answers to cube roots are always going to have the same sign as the sign that's attached to the number under the cube root. All right, so since this number is negative, the cube root is negative. If the cube root was positive, or sorry, if this number was positive, the cube root would be positive. All right. Next, negative 5 plus h squared equals 20. All right, first thing I want to do, I want to get rid of that loose number, that negative 5. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is plus or positive 5. I'm going to do that to both sides. All right, so these are gone. All I have left is h squared. And then 20 plus 5 is just 25. And then the last step, I want to get rid of that exponent. I want to get rid of that 2. Well, the inverse of squaring a number is finding the square root. So I'm going to find the square root of it and find the square root of 25. When I do that, these cancel. All I have left is h. And oh, let's make that a little longer. h. And the square root of 25 is just 5. 
There's our answer. Okay? Now what I want you guys to do is pause the video, try and do five and six on your own, okay? And then I'll be back to work them out. Hopefully you do well. All right, so first thing we gotta do, this entire expression, all right, we need to find the cube root of the entire expression. All right, but since this applies to the whole thing, that's the first thing we want to get rid of, all right? Not the four. We want to get rid of that cube root. So we have to do the inverse of cube root, which is cube. So I'm going to put this to the third power, and I'm going to put this to the third power. Now, these are going to cancel out. All I've got left is four plus u. And then negative 2 to the third power, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we're going to get negative 8. And then the last step, i got to get rid of that positive 4. The inverse is minus or negative 4. So we're going to do that on both sides. These are going to cancel out. All I have left is that u. And then negative 4, or sorry, negative 8 minus 4, same sign, sum. Add them up, you get negative 12. And then the last one, number 6. First thing you guys had to do is get rid of that plus 13. So the inverse is minus 13. These are going to cancel out. Now all I've got left is f squared. And then 62 minus 13, that's going to be 49. And then the last step to solve for f, since f is squared, I got to get rid of that exponent. Got to get rid of that square. So the inverse is square root. So I'm going to do the square root of both sides. That cancels out the square root and the square. So all I've got left now is f. And then the square root of 49, what number times itself is 49? 7. Alright, so that's it. Hopefully this video was a lot faster than the others. So I'm going to stop talking and I will see you guys tomorrow.